Welcome to Day Services, Adult Learning, Volunteering, and Community Connections. My name is Sarah Trowers, Director of Day Services. Jawanio is a registered 501c3 organization and the premier provider of lifespan services in the Hudson Valley of New York for individuals with developmental disabilities, behavioral health challenges, and chronic medical conditions. Jawanio is dedicated to advancing the independence, well-being, and equality of people with disabilities and special needs. As we innovate and grow, we keep one thing at the forefront of all we do, and that is what's best for the people we support, what is best for you. In day service, we engage in a variety of community integration and support services that empower adults with special needs to achieve their personal goals. Our services are tailored based on the individual's choice and need. We are committed to offering community involvement through a variety of volunteer placements and local businesses and organizations. Eligibility for these services is determined by the New York State Office for People with Developmental Disabilities, OPWDD, through the front door. Transportation to and from program is provided based on need. Day programs generally operate five days a week and are individually tailored for individuals to learn new skills, pursue individual interests, and attain lifelong goals and dreams. This includes, but is not limited to, arts, volunteering, attending local college classes, and self-advocacy. We offer without walls, pre-vocational services, and after-the-day respite. Without walls. Using the community as its classroom, small groups of up to four people participate in planned activities in the community all day, such as volunteer work, attending college classes at various colleges, and some engage in part-time and supported employment throughout the day or internships in Rockland and Westchester County. After the day respite. After the day respite services provides a strong focus on learning community, life, wellness activities, and developing independence in the community. This service is offered two or three days per week and transportation home is provided. Pre-vocational work programs offers people with developmental disabilities part-time person-centered day programs which facilitates life skills. In the community and through center-based activities combined with part-time work, pre-vocational work, and contract, or mini business activities. The following is a brief description of our site-based programs. Staff will assist with placement based on the information you share and what is gathered from the paperwork that is presented. Jawanio's Star and Pace programs is a positive adult community experience with specialized program that offers a complete support for ADL needs, nursing services, and focuses on community inclusion. Daily activities include computer workshops, budgeting, horticulture, music, pet therapies, volunteer work, and academic supports. Designed to provide a safe and trusting environment where individuals can build day-to-day -day coping skills as well as new skills to become more confident and productive in their home, program, and community settings. Seniors. Our seniors program are for adults 50 to end of life, which ensures an environment of respect, trust, and support for older persons who are given opportunities to participate in a plethora of programs to maintain independence and self-determination. Our Sunrise and Horizon program is a sensory-based program for adults with complex physical and medical needs that significantly impair their ability to perform activities of daily living. Our NIAC Studio Arts Program is an innovative and specialized community-based arts program that utilizes the arts as the modality for young adults with IDD to continue their education, explore their world, and learn to become responsible and contributing members of society. This program serves young adults 18 to 29 years of age. Our LEAP program, lifelong 
experiences and academics program. This is a full-time service tailored to the needs of those who are on the autism spectrum. The concept is for half-day site-based and half-day in the community. This program will service a distinct group and focus on the interest of areas for the individuals supported. The program will utilize a variety of community resources and therapeutic activities to develop habilitation, community skills, advanced socialization, develop personal responsibility, and improve their life overall. The goal for, this indiv for the individual is to improve physical, psychological, cognitive, and social functioning. The program provides opportunities for health and wellness, gym and YMCA membership, volunteer positions, library membership, horticulture, and nature walks. There will be site-based therapeutic opportunities based on individual preference, academics, and social skills. Communication groups, arts, music, and movement, as well as cooking, are all a part of the services that we provide. Our New City Day Services offers people with developmental disabilities a person-centered day program that facilitates skills through community and center-based activities. Our Yonkers Day program offers people with developmental disabilities a person-centered full or part-time day program that facilitates life skills through community and center-based activities. Services may be combined with part-time supported employment, volunteer work without walls, and or pre-vocational services. I know you want to hear about our intake process. So, what can you expect and what documents do we need? When you are coming to visit our site, we will require that you bring your life plan, a current physical with proof of your MMR, diet order, current PPD, or psychological report, psychiatric report if applicable, list of your current medications, self-medication assessment sheet if applicable, copy of your social security card, a copy of your Medicaid card, your LOC, level of care, your NOD, notice of decision, and the OPWDD front door authorization. Now I know that's a lot, but don't worry. The team that will help you during the intake process will ensure that we get all the right documents prior to your start. If you're unable to email the documents ahead of time, please bring them with you on the day that you visit the program. These documents are all documents that your care manager should have, so she or he or she will also be a great resource to gather the documents so that we can have that. What can you expect? You or a member of your circle of support, parent, guardian, advocate, or care manager may contact the associate program director in Rockland or the program director in Yonkers for intake information about our programs. During the initial call, we will want to know as much information as possible, which will help us to determine which program will best suit the needs of the person looking for services. Once we narrow down that information, we meet with the admissions committee to review the information to ensure that we can support you or the individual who's interested in program. The admissions committee is comprised of the chief program officer, a psychologist, the director of nursing or a nurse, the behavior specialist, the di director of our residential services, and leadership from the day program. We have a robust team going over the information to ensure that you are placed appropriately. Once we determine that we can support you or the person who is looking for services, we will coordinate a visit with the program, the supervisor or team leader who leads the respective program to schedule an appointment in person or via Zoom. We might require a trial, which includes a half day, a full day, or a week, just to ensure that once you or the person supported is on site, it works in both ways. As always, we look forward to meeting with you and providing a detailed overview of the supports that we offer. As mentioned earlier, you may contact the associate director in Rockland or the program director in Yonkers, and they will be your gateway to day services at Giovanio. We believe that quality care should be a partnership, and the only way to have an effective partnership is through communication. 
Just as we expect you to communicate with us, we promise to communicate with you. We will make sure that all your questions are answered during your program visit or on the intake call so you know what the next steps are. We will communicate with you and members of your circle of support. The Day Services Department wants to hear your feedback and how we can continue to improve and do what is right for you and your family. You can voice your concerns by contacting the supervisor or director of the respective programs. We have two formal meetings throughout the year, the semi-annual meeting and the annual meeting. At the end of each year, we also send out two satisfaction surveys, one for the person supported and one for the parent, guardian, or advocate. Services for persons with hearing impairments are also available upon request. I would like to leave you with a story that brings us great joy, a day in the life of Anthony Mundy, a service recipient in our day services program. My name is Anthony Mundy. I am 29. I like to play video games and I like to do music. I guess I like to go to out to eat to do like Communities, these, and I go to touch, and I like to go into training. I like everything about Saint Paul, Lady, and Michael Saxon, Andel, and Arthur, Mr. Keys. And Hercules. Well, this really wasn't about the wall. The, the, these 12 Republicans who voted against the Our goal for him was to be able to communicate and to be able to survive in society. That was what our goal was for him. The reading, the writing, and the arithmetic, that was secondary to us. You know, most parents um, of regular kids, it's reading, writing, arithmetic, and then the rest comes after. We flipped it around, and we did that, and that's one of the reasons why he is, you know, like he is. Life skills are something which are ongoing all the time, and they can learn this by being in and around everything, and we channel most of his energy through that. Okay. I'm not dead. Your buddy's here. Hi. Okay, there we go. Yep. Over here. Over there? Yep, over here. Okay. Make our water nice and refreshing with some lemon and lime. Give it a little bit more flavor. Anthony, come over yeah. here. Why don't you try to help me find romaine lettuce? Do you know what romaine lettuce is? Romaine lettuce. It's, uh, it'll be in the bag and I'll say romaine lettuce. So let's try this. We took him everywhere. He was always out in society. We never left him anywhere. We took him to plays. We took him on trips. We took him on airplanes. We took him on ships. We took him everywhere and exposed him to everything around us and everything so he is familiar and comfortable not only familiar but comfortable in any situation you put him in so here's the scissor okay. there and you they're just gonna go here keep it the nice straight lines for me okay yeah. thanks let me know if you need something else and i'll come back okay okay over the years People's reactions and people's acceptance have changed. It's not like years ago where they were just shunned. 
now people are more um, accepting and accommodating of them. You know, so we've seen that change in people over the years um, because they're, you know, being including in, in just about everything. Never made a distinction or highlight the fact that he was different. We made sure that he thought of himself as being regular. So with that, he takes that and run, and he doesn't see any difference. So once you accept your child for who they are and accept their disability for what it is, then you will start finding and creating ways to get the most for them. What one? This one? Okay. Accept them for who they are, and more than anything else, get a chance to know them. Get a chance to know somebody with a disability. Then they'll understand how accommodating and loving these people are. And they are loving, very loving and accepting. So, you know, if people just give themselves that chance to know somebody, It'll make a huge difference. Carol St. John, the Division Director of our Community Living Services, will now provide an overview of our residential services. Hi, my name is Carol St. John and I'm Division Director of Community Living Services here at Giovanni L. Um, we provide residential services for people who are intellectually disabled. Um, some people are uh, physically disabled as well. And we pro provide services for people at all levels of functioning. Uh, we, right now we have a total of 13 group homes. One is an ICF, an immediate care facility. Um, and we have 12 individual residential alternatives called IRAs. In those houses, we provide services for people at every level. Our age range from 23 to 96. So we have the whole gamut of everyone that you could possibly um, have in community residential services that we are able to support. In addition to the houses, we have an independent living center called um, PJT. And in that living center, we have a total of 17 people who receive services there in 16 apartments. It's, 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 very, um, it's a very nice place for each person to live. They have their own apartment, their own kitchen, their own living room, so they can be very independent, but it's also on, uh, in a complex. So we also have shared areas where, if they want to, they can go watch a movie with some friends, do a cook some cooking with some friends, and share some space as well. In addition to our independent living center, we have a condos program. And in our condos program, we have 11 people that receive services there in mm, six condos. So we have um, five of them where there are two people living there and one person lives by herself. And we provide services from there. Residential services, you know, it's adjusted based on the needs of the people that are looking for the, looking for the support. And we're able to adjust based on that. In order to be eligible to live in a residential services in Giovanni, you have to get a referral through OPWDD, the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, through their um, Residential Opportunities Program, the Certified Residential Opportunities Program. So the way that it works for us is if we have a vacancy, we will let OPWDD know and they will send us intake packages for individuals who are looking for residential placement. That's the only way that we are allowed to provide services. We work with families, and if you're interested in coming to see a house or you want information about how residential services work, I'm very happy to share that information with you. Um, however, until we get a referral packet from OPWDD, we will not be able to provide you with services. Um, and I recommend to families, you know, we're looking at future flat planning for your children, um, your family members, your loved ones. I recommend that you start early. People who are diagnosed with intellectual disabilities are allowed to stay in high school up to the age of 21. I recommend that you start planning. If you think that your loved one is, some, is interested in residential services, start planning from the time they're 17, 18, 19. Because sometimes it could be quite difficult to find residential placements, and we need to make sure that the person that we're looking for matches into a group. So I would start early to explore opportunities out there and see where you want your loved one to go. 
Um, in Community Living Services in Joanio, we support individuals to become as independent as possible. We support people who are uh, on, on the profound level of functioning, intellectual disabilities. Uh, we support people with physical handicaps so they can, you know, they can't do anything for themselves. We have to assist them with showering and eating and all of that. And then we have people on the other end of the scale who are so independent that they have a job. We have people who drive cars. So we have a quite a wide range of um, functioning levels that we support and we adjust our, our services based on each person. Um, the residence, as I was saying, is designed to be each, in each individual. And our houses range from uh, five in Anaira, five to eight. Our ICF, there's 20 people living in an ICF. Our independent living center, like I said, we have 17 people living there, but they each have their own apartment. Um, and what we do is we work with that person and their circle of support to determine what they want to do with their future. What are their interests? What are their needs? What do we need to do to help them get where they want to get and make a plan and decide how we're going to get there? The person that lives there, the individual that lives there, that's the person that's driving this plan. And their circle of support, which includes their parents and you know, friends in the community, anyone who they think is important to them that they would like to be involved in decision making, we have those people in, involved as well. So we work together to make sure that whatever that person needs, we will get them. For example, we have someone who was interested, he wanted to be a pilot. He doesn't have the capability of being a pilot. We talk to him and understand that. However, when we keep investigating, it determined that he likes planes. So we got to make sure that he got to visit the airports. We got him a, a job in a place where they make model airplanes. So we work and we adjust based on what the person wants, based on what they need, and based on what they're capable of and give them the best uh, opportunity that we can provide them. Um, community Living Services, we have supportive IRAs and supervised IRAs. Supervised IRAs is where the people that live there need 24-hour staffing support. So we have people awake and alert 24 hours a day. The staff on the night shift must be awake to keep monitoring the people that live there and see if they need any help. Um, so we have, most of our sites are uh, supervised and they're 24 hours. We also have supported apartments, and what that, those apartments, um, the condos, we have a supportive apartments, and the PJT Independent Living Center, also we have supportive apartments. And what that means is that we have staff go to the apartments, go to the, the sites, and assist the people that live there, but they're not 24 hours a day. So we have ranging from four hours a day where staff will go in and check on the individual that lives there, see what they need, see what kind of help they need, provide them with them. We also have one condo that we only have staff going there once a week. So those people that live there are very independent. They have jobs, they go, they clean their apartment themselves, they cook, they do everything themselves. So at Joanna, we are working with everybody in the range. Also, and we are willing to make any changes and adjustment based on what the needs are. I've had some families recently ask me about uncertified sites. So this is, what I, this is my new project. I'm looking in to see if we can get uncertified sites and how that would work. Uh, we adjust based on the needs of the people that are looking for the supports. Um, the residents, people that live in a residential program, as I said before, we work on an individual basis. Now, it's not as easy as it sounds because you have five to eight people living in a house and we're developing a plan for each person. And then what we have to do is see how they work together. So whenever we have a vacancy in a residence, we look to see when we're screening to replace the person that left, we're looking to see somebody that matches with the group so that at least some of their goals and interests and choices will balance with the rest of the group. And it will be helpful, you know, in terms of developing relationships, you know, or families. I call them families at this point because, for example, we have a house that has five young men in them, in the house. They're all people who need to use a wheelchair for, to ambulate but they're also mild IDD, so they are, have a higher functioning level, they're very smart and they can work together. They have developed a house that it's like five brothers living there. And they're like every other house, they have good days, they have their fights, but they work together and they eventually, they come to some kind of comprom com 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 promise to ensure that everybody is happy. So we continue to work like that. The way that the system works, the circle of support, we will have a meeting before the person moves in, to determine 
what they need, what supports they need, how we can set up the, the house for them, and then we arrange based on that. And then that, and also we develop a plan of the goals and things that they want to learn and do in the next six months. And then we continue every six months to review where that plan, where it is, see, do we want changes made? Is a person interested in doing something different? And we continue to work with them um, until they get what they need, and then we go on to the next goal. Remember, when people move into community living services, this is now their home. We expect them to stay here for the rest of their lives. So we make adjustments based on what they need. And as they improve and they learn and they develop, we adjust based on that. The other thing that we do is that we do try to encourage people to develop and grow. And as they develop and grow and become more independent, someone who came into an ICF could move into an IRA which has less staffing and less support and less restrictions. And if they continue to learn and grow, they can move into a supportive apartment where they're not staffed there 24 hours a day. They can be by themselves, they can get a job. So we work with each person and have them develop and grow. We also work very closely with the day services at Sarah Review. And when you see Stacy later, she'll be talking about an employment services. We work together as a department. So we want a person to grow, not only in the residential functioning, um, independent living skills, but also in professional functioning and jobs and you know, developing as much as they're possible to go, you know, to go as far as they can. Um, like I said before, if you're looking for residential services, start early. I recommend you start early. I also recommend that you reach out to someone like me, if not a Giovanni or not an agency that provide residential services so you can see what kind of supports there are out there, what kind of availability are, there are out there. If you have uh, questions about other things that you want, you might think that I'm not talking about right here, but you may have some, um, some ideas about, always reach out. We are always willing to add and adjust based on the needs that you have. Um, so we are, like, Joanio is a, an agency that provides life plan of services. Um, a lifespan of services, I, I apologize. So we continue to do that, um, and we, we, we have created residences specifically for certain people. I did give you an example of our salmon residence with the five men um, that, are, that use wheelchair. That house has been developed specifically with them in mind. So there's a ceiling lift track across the whole house. So that wherever they are, if they need to get out of their chair and, and transfer to their bedroom, their bathroom, anything like that, it's already built into the ceiling. Our most recent uh, group home that we opened, uh, Rustic Ira, was developed with, in mind, with six men who are on the autism spectrum. They just graduated out of high school, so we have a young group of uh, people who are on the spectrum. So we have specific staffing training, dealing with autism, dealing with some behavioral management issues, because we do have people, people who are on the spectrum, sometimes they have problems communicating, and that develops into some behaviors that we need to help, help them to control. So staff are specifically trained for that. Uh, we work with the day program very closely in that in that rustic era, the staff that works on the morning shifts actually comes to work, work with the people that live there, and then takes them into a vehicle and take them to day program and provide services at day program. So there's a consistency level there. So when we are developing houses, anything new, we keep those kind of things in mind and make sure that the people who are coming in gets the best that they, they need. That's kind of residential services in a nutshell. Um, we support people who are 18 years and over, although the, the, your loved, loved one can stay in school up to 21, sometimes people choose to leave early. So we can provide services to anyone who's over 18. Um, so, and they need to go through the front door, notify OPWDD that they want to be in the Certified Residential Opportunities list. Um, and if you're interested specifically to come into Giovanni, you can just tell them to send us the packet and then we would follow up with you. If you just want information, you can also always reach out. My contact information is provided for you. Um, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a testimonial that we have. We have a pair of twins, Tiffany and Kimberly, Kimberly Mason, that live with us. Um, Tiffany is extremely independent. She is physically disabled 
and she is mild IDD. She had she used to work for our HR program before COVID messed with everybody's life. Right now she's working for a church. She uses a wheelchair, but she's independent with a power wheelchair. So basically we have staff in there that goes to her apartment. She lives in her condo program and assists her with what she needs. And it's mostly her telling them what to do that she couldn't physically, she's not able physically able to do herself. Um, and the staff that live in, that stays in the apartment on the overnight shift are allowed to sleep because she's very capable. They only need to be there in the event of an emergency. Her sis sister, however, Kimberly, needs more support. She lives at our Bobby Lois Ira, and that's a 24-hour supervised site, and she needs more assistance. She needs more prompting. She needs more reminders. So both of them, the different level of skills that they have, the different level of interest we were able, we were able to support. Um, and, you know, they, Tiffany and Kimberly gave us this testimonial letting people know how we were able to support them. And it also, from my mind, let people know that we are willing to adjust to provide them with the services they need. Um, my contact information is available. If you have any questions or you're looking for any more information, feel free to call me. Thank you. My name is Mitch Spiegel. I'm uh, the program director for Joanio's Article 16 Clinic. An Article 16 Clinic is an OPWDD certified program that typically provides long-term habilitative services to individuals develop with developmental disabilities. Our, our clinicians and therapists are well experienced with the needs of individuals with developmental disabilities. And our program is designed in that we give um, typically 30 minute one-on-one -on -one ses sessions with everybody who attends our programs. We provide occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, and social work services. Speech therapy is the evaluation and treatment of communication disorders and swallowing disorders. Some examples of, this, of the skills that a speech pathologist might work on with somebody include strengthening the muscles of the mouth, making clearer sounds, uh, matching emotions with the correct facial expressions, understanding body language, responding to questions, and um, working on feeding issues. Occupational therapy is the use of assessment and treatment to develop or recover um, tasks of daily living, such as self-care routines, writing and copying, um, written uh, work, feeding, f small manipulatives, which sometimes involves dressing or even uh, feeding activities, like using a utensil or a, a spoon or a cup. Physical therapy is a specialty that promotes mobility and function through the examination, diagnosis, prognosis, and physical intervention. Some of the examples a physical therapist might focus on is improving range of motion, strength and flexibility, working on balance, relieving pain, improving the ability to stand and walk. Sometimes they work on helping an individual learn how to reposition themselves in a wheelchair um, and safety in all areas. Social work is counseling services that can help you sort through thoughts and feelings in a safe environment and find strategies to help you cope with difficult situations and improve quality of life. Some examples of what a social worker might focus on is anxiety management, depression, social, social skills, behavioral issues, and impulsivity. To be eligible for our Article 16 services, the individual must have a documented development, developmental disability. In order to receive the services, you, you'll need a prescription from your doctor, be OPWDD eligible, or have a documented developmental disability. We accept private insurance if eligible upon review of coverage, Medicaid and Medicare, and we also accept most managed Medicaid programs. 
for further information or to start the intake process, you can contact me, Mitchell Spiegel, I'm the Joanio Article 16 Program Director. My number is 845-708-2000, extension 4367, mitchell.spiegel at Thanks. Hi, I'm Stacy Kantrowitz, and I am the Director of Community Employment Services at Jawanio. At Jawanio Community Employment Services, we believe that work is the place from which all other things can grow in a person's life, right? You're working, now you're more independent, you have purpose, why, you, why do you get up in the morning, right? And now you're earning money, maybe you can get that car, maybe you can get your own apartment, maybe you make friends at work, Maybe you meet your significant other. So we really believe that work can be the center from which everything else can grow in a person's life. It's very empowering and exciting. Juanio has been serving people across a broad range of disabilities since 1986. And what makes us a little different from some of our sister agencies is that we serve people of all disabilities, not just developmental disabilities, not just behavioral health, but everyone and everyone in between and every combination of disabilities you can imagine. We start at age 14 through retirement or end of life. Since we've been in operation, we have facilitated over 5,500 job hires for people with disabilities in all industries at all levels of employment. I think when most people think about supported employment, they might imagine people in entry level jobs bagging groceries, cleaning. And while we do have a lot of folks in entry-level positions, because we all have to start somewhere in life, right? We don't walk into our dream job uh, as our first job, generally. Um, it might surprise you to know that we also have a doctor, and we've had an accountant and a graphic designer, and we also have people bagging groceries at ShopRite and everyone in between. So through Community Employment Services, uh, there are a wide variety of services that we offer. I'm gonna go through the menu of services, not all of them in great detail, but I just wanna hit on the point. So we provide vocational assessments, community-based assessments uh, at different businesses in different industries, um, career exploration, uh, career counseling, and vocational planning, work readiness, self-advocacy training, community-based work experiences, paid internships, benefits advisement counseling, travel training, counseling on post-secondary educational options, um, educational coaching in the classroom, tutoring outside of the classroom, customized job development to help people find work, planning for self-employment, job coaching and employment services, and long-term supported employment. So with job preparation counseling, Juwanio assists individuals to identify different potential career paths for themselves. What does the world of work look like? What does that job look like, a day in the life, right? What does the job market look like? What are the opportunities? What are the educational needs to get there? And so we want to paint a real picture of different career path options for folks in their areas of interest. Work readiness training. Again, what does the world of work look like? Not everyone has had a job yet when they come into our services. And so we want to teach them how to navigate the world of work, their communication skills, their social interpersonal skills, uh, harassment in the workplace, intimidation, bullying, coping with stress, teamwork, healthy living, uh, building self-esteem and self-confidence at work. How do you talk to your supervisor? How do you talk to your coworkers? Overcoming challenges, setting goals, and the appropriate use of social media. We also provide self-advocacy training. This is really important for people with disabilities, uh, for everyone, really. <laughs> um, we want to teach students to become introspective about their own disabilities. Uh, what learning styles have worked for me in the past? 
What hasn't worked for me? And to help them understand their rights, both as a student and in the world of work, and to help them uh, find their own voice and empower them to advocate for their needs appropriately. We also offer work-based learning experiences, which allows uh, participants to put the information that they've learned in the classroom into a tangible experience, where they have a hands-on experience in a particular industry or in multiple industries. So they can kind of put it on a cracker and try it and see how it feels. And then we observe how they do. We also provide community-based assessment, again, in a myriad of industries, uh, so that we can see what work skills are identified through that observation. What do they do well? What are the areas of improvement that need working on? Counseling on post-secondary options. Uh, we really <clears throat> want to open this up uh, uh, with a broader brush stroke for students and also for families to understand uh, what's available. Uh, college certainly is one. Uh, trade schools, technical schools, workshops, apprenticeship programs, uh, certificate programs. There are a myriad of educational options available depending on the goals of the individual and the career path that they've chosen. And so we really want to give a broad brushstroke and an understanding of what's available. We also assist with the application processes for college and financial aid applications. We also provide internships. Through Access VR, uh, individuals referred to us for internships, for waged reimbursed internships. Uh, are, we find opportunities for them, again, in an area of their interest, uh, matching their unique skills with industry, and giving them a real life internship experience where they can learn the skills of a job, and then they have an internship to put on a resume. In this scenario, when it's Access VR funded, uh, we, Joanio as the provider agency, actually become the employer. We act as a fiscal intermediary because DOL regulations state that you cannot work for a for-profit uh, as a volunteer, only a not-for-profit. So by making them our employee as a not-for-profit, uh, they're under our insurance, our liability, and they're our employee, we pay them, and then the state reimburses the salary. So then they can work anywhere at no cost to the employer. So it's kind of tough to say no to that. Uh, internships are generally 160 hours, but they can go as much as 320. So it's a nice chunk of time. Through the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, OPWDD, we also have an employment training program. And they have a similar model to Access VR with internships. The difference is that through the OPWDD model, uh, OPWDD becomes the fiscal intermediary. They hire the individuals, the interns, onto their payroll, and they pay them to learn the job while they work. We negotiate. Uh, the job placement, the internship placement, both with the funder and the participant to find a good match for their skill set and the needs of an industry or a particular business. And in doing so, we look at the job description ahead of time together. And that job description is negotiated. What are the must-haves? Are there any forgivables on this job description? What does the person actually have to learn in order to be hired at the end? And these internships go for quite a bit longer. They're generally six to nine months, but they can go as long as a year, with the goal of the employer hiring them onto their payroll if we turn them into the employee that they need by the end of the internship or at any juncture they're in. Juanio has business partnerships with over 200 employers. We work with employers in Orange County, Rockland County, Westchester County, the Bronx, and Northern New Jersey uh, in a myriad of industries. <clears throat> the majority of our employers have offered assessment opportunities for our folks to go in and do community-based assessments, uh, work experience development, internships, job placement, and customized employment, where they carve a job for a particular individual. 
When we're developing relationships with businesses, we're not developing for one person. We're not going to an employer with our handout saying, will you do me a favor and hire this person with a disability? This isn't a mitzvah. People with disabilities have real talent, right? And so we wanna look at their unique talents and match that to the needs of a business. So when we're developing relationships, we're talking to the business going, what do you do here? What are the needs of your business? What are the jobs that you're having trouble filling? Um, what's, what's your highest need position? Not necessarily entry level, right? And then we're matching from the pool of people that we have to the needs of that particular business. And so when we're developing relationships, we're not just developing a job for one person. We're developing and nurturing a relationship with a business, potentially opening the door to multiple opportunities for multiple people. Through supported employment services, we offer job coaching, and that can look very different for different people. It is tailored to the individual and their unique needs and also to the unique needs of the business. So through Juanio, uh, we go and visit people at work and coach them on site, but we may also coach them off site. Maybe they don't want to be disclosed to their employer. Maybe they don't want their employer to know that they're in a program and that's fine, that's their right and we respect that, right? So we tailor how we support them to the situation. Maybe the job site isn't conducive to us being at the site, right? Maybe it's disruptive. So we want to be sensitive also to the needs of the business. So when we're supporting people, we're tailoring our services to the entire situation. But at the end of the day, if we have put support services in place where we're job coaching them, we're modeling how the job should be done, or we're giving them a safe environment to vent any frustrations or any concerns that they have. Um, maybe someone can't read and we're giving them a picture chart of their uh, tasks for the day, right? It's, it's gonna be tailored to the individual. If we've put all of these things in place, if we've trained them well and supported them well, and maybe we've had to put some assistive tech in place or whatever the things are. At the end of the day, if they're able to perform the job to industry standard, isn't the disability kind of irrelevant at that point? Our goal is to make people as independent as possible and have them perform to their best. So why does all of this work? I wanna give you a couple of examples of success stories. One is a programmatic success story and one is an individual participant success story so that you can start to get a vibe for what we do and why I get up in the morning every day. A couple of years ago, Juanio entered into a multi-agency collaborative with Rockland BOCES, Jewish Family Services in Rockland, and Access VR. And through that partnership, we were able to develop a pilot program designed to train individuals on the autism spectrum to become medical billing coders. And through that program, BOCES developed an amazing training program. Juanio assessed potential participants through vocational assessments to make sure that they had the appropriate skills to be successful, to digest the knowledge, and to do well in the industry. We supported them in the classroom through educational coaching. We also provided tutoring outside of the classroom as well as transportation when it was needed. Every single student obtained a certification in medical billing and coding. And every single student now has an internship. So thus far, this program has been 100% successful and we couldn't be more proud of our interns. Now for a personal success story. Thomas Nordstrom. When Thomas was young, his mother didn't have a lot of resources, so she had to become resourceful. She was looking for support. She was looking for ways to help her son, who had been diagnosed with autism. 
Her husband had recently passed away, and she was a one-woman show. Over time, once he became school age, uh, various therapies were offered to Thomas, pragmatic language therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and he started to thrive. He made a best friend in school. Thomas went on to college, and he graduated with honors. When I first met Thomas, he came into our supported employment program, and first he worked in our document imaging department, and he excelled. He was a star employee. When our receptionist left, we gave Thomas the opportunity to advance and do new things. He became clerical staff, and he began greeting people at the front desk, directing them to programs and services. And I have to say that there were times where Thomas had to deal with some pretty sticky situations and emergency situations at the front desk, things that even the most seasoned of staff would have found difficult. And he has always handled those situations with poise and grace and professionalism. He's a huge support to the, to the staff. He's a huge support to the management team in community employment services. He keeps us all straight. And we couldn't be more proud of him. And we're so grateful to have him as part of our team and so grateful for his sunny personality that he brings with him to work every day. Thomas, we love you. Eligibility is based on the individual's age, their disability, and geographic location. We start serving folks at age 14 on up through retirement or end of life. In fact, we just had several people retire from their jobs that they've been in for 30 years, which is really exciting. We have contracts with Access VR, the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, the Office of Mental Health, and we also have various grants. And so when we talk about eligibility, when parents reach out to me, I'll be asking a lot of these kinds of questions so that I can know where people fit uh, so that we can offer services. My referral and contact information is here. I want you to feel free to reach out at any time. I'm always available also in the evenings, and I welcome those calls in the evenings from parents and families. Thank you so much for attending our presentation. I know that I speak for everyone, Sarah, Carol, and Mitch, and myself, when I say that we're here for you. We want to be a resource. We want to support you and your family in any way that we can, and we're all here for you. Please be safe and be well.